Ladies and gentlemen, Michael Palmisano here, and uh, after going to Playing in the Sand in 2022 and getting this shirt from a concert that never happened, uh, from it being canceled, to going to SPAC uh, and then getting up there and on our way to the show, having that show been canceled, all of my friends that are into this music have been like, don't go to any shows, you're bad luck. And while I know that that's not the case, when Annie and I were thinking about going to Playing in the Sand this year, we said, you know, ah, let's save the money. Let's, let's, let's not risk it, right? Um, but then Dead & Company announced it'd be their last year. We're like, oh. And then Goose announces that they're going to be other band. We're like, oh. Okay. We have to go. We have to go. We can't let all the negative crap win. We're going, and we're going to do it. And so found somebody who had a medical emergency this week and was able to transfer a package to us. And so my wife, Annie, and I will be there. So if you're going to be there, please let me know. I'm going to try to have a meetup. Uh, I'm going to go with like Saturday high noon at like where the stage is by the pool. I think it's Nazook. I will post something on my Instagram and on YouTube and Discord and all that. Um, so please, let's go have some fun. I, I am really looking forward to it. So I figured we're going to go on today and we're going to pick apart a dead tune, one we haven't done. It's been a minute. And so I quickly went on GuitarGate, searched dead, and I realized Daniel Butler so gently reminds me, I've never done a Terrapin station. Now, obviously, I love Terrapin. I know the song. I haven't really learned it, though. I know it's in F. Lydian, give or take. Um, but let's see if we can break down this 7489 from Orchard Park. Daniel, thank you so much for being a subscriber on the website and taking my lessons and courses. Remember, picking what comes next on YouTube is a little thank you for those of you that allow me the privilege to be one of your online teachers. If you're interested in joining the community, it's the first link in the description. Here we go. show you a little bit of what's going on here and again if any of these terminologies that um that i'm going to talk about are confusing to you again i go over all this stuff on the site but there's plenty of free resources out there too um davy's got a great channel davy if you're watching um you do a great job my friend but here's the here's the funk right here's what time it is f major is the name of the game but in diatonic harmony there are four major chords, your one, four, and five. And we look at this progression, our basic harmony up to this point, we have an F major, a G major, a C major, and a D minor. That puts us firmly in the, in the, in the key of C. If C is one, F must be four, G must be five, D minor must be two. So we are firmly in C major, but because we're focusing on F, F is the tonal center. 
This is what makes it a modal progression. A modal progression is when you focus on something that isn't the one. So we're going to focus on the four. So this is F Lydian. And this intro perfectly encapsulates the sound of F Lydian because you're just doing F major. But then what are we doing? We're lifting up our first finger on the first fret of the second and first strings respectively. And that gives us a B and an E. And when in terms of F, that's going to be a sharp four and a major seventh. And that's Lydian. This, that is the sound of Lydian. And so all these little licks in here, all these, and pushing up from F to G, Bobby's doing it up here, all these little, that is just an F major triad to G to give you that sound of F Lydian. So remember, the note that you're looking for, the note that's going to be different when you're soloing an F or trying to do parts, is you're going to have a B natural, that sharp four. That's it. Shadows of a sailor born with spoke foul and fair old swamp. Down in Carlisle, she loved a lady many years ago. All right, so that little part there, two things I want to mention. One, uh, I say it a lot, learn the melody to every song that you learn. The answer to all your questions is in the melody. If you didn't know what I was just saying about Lydian and all that, you could very quickly just come right in on that B. When it's the G, when Jerry's singing. That's your melody, B natural and then it walks straight down the scale right so when you're in D minor it's there C B is the major third of G A is the major third of of F major and it resolves to that G there so if you just follow Jerry's vocal line you'll immediately see that we are firmly in the key of C major, which is F, um, F Lydian. Now, the other thing is that it does this. Uh, uh. All this, how does he do this? So all we're doing is accentuating, again, this F Lydian thing. So you can slide up. I, I think he does like a, or, yeah. And then, but all we're doing is F E. So root of F, major seventh of F, and then sharp four, fifth of F, B to C. So F, B, C, but you can do the, I think he does it like that. There's a little run. And so what this is, is we're shooting for the major third of F, that's A. So this would be like F first inversion, and you just go. And then you make it major seventh, and then go back to root position, and then hit your other chord tone, sharp four to five. Something like that. Beside him stands a man, a soldier from the Lord Sunday, who came through many fights. But lost in love. Lydian is such a cool sound. While the story teller speaks, a door in the fire creeps. Suddenly flies open, and a girl is standing there. Eyes alight with glow. Such a great keyboard sound. Which of you to gain me tell? We'll risk uncertain pain from hell. 
I will not forget. I love how Phil sometimes he, he mimics that vocal on it. Right? You hear him like like taking the actual vocal melody in the bass. Love those little things. If you, if you will not take a chance. Again, following the note on the third string, a lot of times, you know, when I first started learning dead tunes, I'd be like, how do all of these chords work? Like, who goes... Right? I can't think of a single other band that would have, like, a double D like that and then stagger walk down. The answer is the melody. The answer is the note on the third string. That's how it connects. Root of D, right? Root of C, third of G, third of F. That's how it works. It's a strain, not disaster. Yeah, there's a little boo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the part I've never learned. So. Yeah. You'd be surprised how my memory isn't so great with all these little things that um, change every time. And so, but it's, I, I feel like it starts lower on B and then goes up. That's it. So, C major, my friends. Now our focus, again, F Lydian, but C major, all our notes are coming from that. G, E, D, C. Focusing right on that B. To A. Love that line. Again. It's just a C major scale. C, B, A, B, C, D, E. But the reason it's got that Lydian vibe is over F, again, sharp four to five, going up to F, your major seven here. Slam it coming out again. That's how it stands today. You decide if he was wise. Story teller makes no choice. Soon you will not hear his voice. His job is to shed light and not to master. I love that line so much. His job is to shed light and not to master. What the hell is Brent doing there? So again, watch Brent. So F Lydian is C major. All the white keys on the keyboard. So we're just we're just kind of feeling it out right now. So he's just he's just poking around in C major, right? That pattern one, pattern one here, major scale. And 
he's just poking around in it. Love this shot. Love that, Phil. Those inversions in the bass. C7, C9. The B flat in there to E minor. Okay, so now now we're clearly modulating. Okay, in 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 no in no key whatsoever. When we have C7, C with the B flat, right? This this tritone in diatonic harmony that would go to F. So it makes sense that that might be implied if we want to have a big pull back to F, but sure shit not back to E. Very wild sound. It's almost like you're thinking it like E minor, going down to a flat six, but you're just, keep keep in mind that B flat. That B flat, that's the note you're looking for. That's the note that changes. That's the one that you gotta watch out for. So if you're, if you're like getting squirrely in here and you're like, oh, I'm taking leads and something's getting screwed up, you're being instead of B flatting. I, it's such a cool tease. I've never figured this part out. But F major 7. It sounds like to C7 still. Still a B flat in there. No, B flat. But then, when it goes to the E minor, it's the E to F. Remember, that's, that's kind of the trigger here. We're still trying to bring our ear back to that that F Lydian thing. But the fact that it comes from a C7 or C9 or however they choose to choose to get there, um, it's just a wild thing. Remember, B flat's the note you're looking out for. That part in E. So again, you know, this D, E, F sharp. So first three notes in D major, but of course that's flat seven, root, and nine in E minor. Um, but then it goes, brightens up to A major now, for the inspiration moves me brightly. It's so great to modulate when you go to um, uh, like another iconic part of the song. Uh, because it just like it's so obvious that the tonality changed, right? It's so it's so clear that the tonality changed, and you pair it with a line like "Inspiration moved me blight brightly," and everybody latches onto it. Um, this is great. Move me brightly. Got four chord D major. Ooh. D major to D major seven. Did I catch that. So, right? So. We're watching out for this little change, D to C sharp in the harmony. Like the song e major. So, classic songwriting technique here. 
uh, we've modulated to the key of A, or A mixolydian, okay? So that's A with a G in it. But um, really, this comes from... Um, uh, no, no, I misspoke. We're E, D, and A. So we're, we're firmly in A major. Forgive me, I misspoke. Um, point is, A is 1, D is 4. So we're going back and forth between... E major, D major, A major, uh, but this songwriting technique where you have a major four and you just bump the root up a half step and bring your other root down a whole step to make that uh, you know D sharp diminished thing. That is such a cool songwriting technique, and what it does is it brings your ear to want to go to E. Now it's the dead, so it might not go to E, but what we're creating here is this diminished sound, this tritone, right, which always one wants to go down, the fourth wants to come down to the major third, and the major seventh wants to come up to the root. Always. So it's always. So this really is just a way to get to E. And where do we get? E. Let me restart my camera just to make sure. Okay, we're back, we're back, we're back. Ooh, B minor. The spiral light of Venus rising first to shine. A C sharp minor. Okay, yes. so firmly an A major. Crickets and cicadas sing. Same thing. We're just coming from it from a little behind. Right? To get, we're still shooting for that. A rare and different tool. Love that. Same kind of move as Althea, B minor. A, E. He loves it. This is the part I don't know. Our A minor. Uh, why am I C sharpened? Coming at it right from behind it, right? So, fifth root, minor third on A. Walking down this E minor uh, uh, triad here. So, 
So A minor triad, a second inversion, so fifth root, minor third, going down like this, and now we are a root position E minor, fifth minor third root. D major triad, root, third, fifth. Then C major triad reversed, fifth, third, root. So, uh, uh. There it is. Again, the melody, right? So, go into the D. Very cool by Bobby right here. So these are all the same chords, right? Right? Actually, that's not right. There's a harmony in there. Fifth. Um, maybe. Yeah, it's it's, it's all the. It would take a long time for me to figure out all the different harmonies. A lot of you experienced, um, you know, deadheads out there that have been playing probably like know it's how it's evolved over time, and it's very obvious. Um, I've never tried to learn these parts right here, but that. So many weird sounds happen. Love how they went down and Brent went up. Uh, you know that um, uh, this is like, you know, like. Brent, Brent. Yes, love that note, Phil.
And who knows where they go from there. All right, that was Terrapin Station, Orchard Park, 7489. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed that. I hope you learned something. Um, this is a monster of a tune. Uh, you could work on this forever, I mean literally forever, and find something new, something uh, something poignant, something powerful, something that like, I can't believe I missed that before, okay? Um, but the very broadest of broad strokes are, it's a celebration, I'm talking harmonically speaking, um, not so much about the lyrics at this moment. Uh, sometimes it's the music, sometimes it's the lyrics that takes you, you know, you could do a bunch of things on both. F. Lydian is the name of the game in the beginning. All the little motifs that keep being that are, that 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 are re, they're introduced, reintroduced, you know, modified with heart. It's all to accentuate the E and the F, so the major seven and the root, and then the B and the C, the sharp four to the five. All the licks, all the lines, um, are meant to accentuate that. The vocal melody holds it all together by descending, of course, from D to C to B to A to G, so in the same key. Um, so what that does is um, it all those little chords and all those little movements are anchored by a simple, singable melody line that makes it all work. And all the ornamentation on top gives it that floaty kind of Lydian thing, but it's not like oh, we're making this song in Lydian. Like, it's held together by a simple melody that's diatonic, that non-musicians can sing and get stuck in their head. That's the trick to this music. It's a trick to all music. It, it's You have to have the melody. That's what makes the chords work. So many bands in this genre, jam bands, if you will, you know, they go so outer spacey, but they're not rooted. They're not anchored in songs that non-musicians can get stuck in their head with simple singable melodies, with lyrics attached to them that that transcend the any one particular time and place. It's that it's it's that it means something to them wherever they are, but it's four or five notes in a descending pattern that makes all the chords work. I mean, that's kind of the point. Um, then it does some really cool modulations. Um, I love that C9 part or C7, whatever, C with the B flat in it, uh, to E minor and F. That's evil and filthy and great. Just when you're going through it, just remember, are we B flatting or are we being? That's what changes. Then we firmly go into A major. Um, you know that because you have an A, you have a D, you have an E, you have a B minor and a C sharp minor. So you have one, two, three, four, and five. You have all the friends there coming out to play. Um, but then when it moves past that into the end where it does this, ba -da -da, ba -da -da, we are firmly into a Dorian. Okay. So C sharp becomes C. Remember, we're always third hunting. That's the, that's, that, that is the point of all this, you know, learn to become a third hunter. Um, the note that's important changes from C sharp, the major third of a to C the minor third of a. And if you look at the chords that accompany with it, like all those little things that go down, um, a, a minor, you have E minor, D major, C major, G major. So that firmly puts you in A Dorian, focus being the second position or the two chord in G major. Because again, remember, if you have three major chords, what are they? One, four, and five. So if we have D major, C major, G major, that must be five, four, one, which means A is two. And the note to watch out for in that, F sharp, F sharp. When you're putting your harmonies together, that's the note that changes from Dorian, Aeolian, Dorian, flat six, major six. So when you're putting all your harmonies together and you're working together as a band and you're like, oh, something's, something's not working there, check your thirds. Somebody's probably C sharping instead of Cing. Um, but more often than not, it's going to happen in the upper extensions, and somebody's going to be effing when you should be f sharping. And that's all I'm going to say about that. I love you all. I hope to see you soon. Come nerd out with me in Mexico. You probably already have to have your tickets. Um, I would love to see you. I'd love to meet you in person. Let's drink a beer. Let's hang out. Let's enjoy the music. Let's enjoy actually getting to see a show. I love you all. Have a great day. Cheers. <laughs>